Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am Fiona Chin, qualified naturopath and co-founder and author of the Kidney Disease Solution. And I'm joined today by the amazing, beautiful, very talented Emily Carhill. Emily is a qualified naturopath registered nurse. She works in a large cardiovascular unit here in Melbourne, Australia. She has a special interest in all things kidney disease, as well as oncology and cardiovascular, obviously. Uh, Emily is also the only qualified uh, kidney disease solution practitioner that Duncan and myself, founders of the program, have trained, um, who's qualified to help navigate people through that program and tailor it uh, for their individual needs. Um, and apart from being an all-round legend, Emily is a wealth of information. She is answering all the emails that come through from our Cargenesis, which is our supplement range. She writes all our Facebook posts, or the bulk of them anyway, and um, she helps me write the blog post. So it's Emily and I banging away on blogs <laughs> during the week in amongst our very busy clinical practices. So um, I am very grateful for having Emily as a support to me because otherwise it's me that does all of that stuff and I don't have time. So thank goodness you helped me with that, Emily. I'm always very grateful for you and I know our community is super grateful for you as well. And thank you for joining me today again on another video. So we wanted today to do a bit of a shorter video because Emily and I love to get talking. We do these big long ones. We wanted to do a quick how to do potassium leaching well, why it's of an advantage if you've got elevated potassium levels in kidney disease, why you may want to do it, how to do it, and what sort of percentages that you can expect to find if you do decide to potassium leach and what sort of levels that will bring that down by. So Emily, do you want to just start by giving us an overview of actually what potassium leaching is? Yes. So potassium leaching is basically just a way of reducing the potassium content of vegetables. So what we're doing is we're literally leaching out the potassium um, from the vegetable um, in a, there's a certain way um, that we do that. But yeah, basically to lower the content of potassium, which is important for people who need to follow a high potassium diet because they have elevated potassium um, on their blood tests. Well, low potassium diet, yes. They've got high potassium. Oh, did I say high potassium? Yeah, and I do that stuff all the time. That's how my brain works too. <laughs> I caught another video where I said Dan Shen raises blood pressure and I'm like, no, it lowers it. <laughs> but yes, we're a low potassium diet. Low and potassium so, diet. <laughs> so why, let's first cover off why would people have with kidney disease elevated potassium? What's the mechanism behind that? Yeah, so one of the roles of the kidneys is to um, balance our electrolytes in our body. Um, and one of the things that it does is excretes uh, potassium. When the kidneys aren't working as well, they're not as effective in doing that. And we'll start to see um, potassium levels in the bloodstream rise. So um, that gets tested on a blood test. The issues with having elevated potassium is that it can have, um, you know, when potassium levels are quite elevated, um, quite severe consequences um, on our cardiovascular health, um, particularly, and actually um, cause our heart to not function properly and, you know, can in the extreme be a cause of, of death. So it is, you know, obviously something that needs to be monitored. Um, and for those people with elevated potassium levels, one of the ways that we can help to lower those is to reduce the amount of potassium they're getting from their diet. Now, Emily and I did a whole video, video, a whole video, a whole video <laughs> about, about um, potassium. And I just want to reiterate this fact that almost all renal dietitians are going to put people with later stages and even early stages of kidney disease on a low potassium diet. Emily, please tell everybody why that's an issue. <laughs> so that is an issue because a lot of our foods that are higher in potassium and the ones that people typically cut out are our fruit and vegetables. So they're our alkaline forming foods. Um, they're our foods that are high in other nutrients with things like magnesium that are really important to the body. They're our fibrous foods, which is important for our gut. Um, and they are actually um, high potassium foods have been shown to 
reduce the um, progression of kidney disease and the occurrence of kidney disease. So, um, you know, it's cutting potentially cutting out a really healthy and important uh, part of our diet when it's not necessarily necessary. And here's the other thing I wanted to reiterate is that the only time you need to take out potassium is if a blood test is showing that you've got elevated, not before, because as Emily said, if you cut out potassium from your diet, taking it out when it's not required actually accelerates the decline in kidney function. It's not a protective thing. Take, you don't take potassium out of your diet as a protective thing. That's the opposite. Taking potassium out of your diet, if it's not indicated in a blood test, is not protective. You're going to potentially, because you're not getting alkalizing foods, accelerate the progression of the disease. It's only needed if a blood test shows it. Now, the other problem is a lot of blood tests, especially if you're using a tourniquet and you're doing the fist pumping mechanism, will falsely bump up potassium on a blood test and you'll get false elevated potassium when you don't have elevated potassium right i've got that right yes so yeah. yeah you need to if you're going to have a blood test to check for potassium you need to make sure that they um don't use the uh, fist pumping and that the tourniquet is um off or they yeah you would know better than me being a nurse of how to get around that and lisa maybe i'll let you answer that and i won't make stuff <laughs> up um yeah if a if a tourniquet has been on for too long um it can uh the blood can start to hemolyze and that then increases, falsely increases. So it looks like potassium levels are higher. Again, if you're doing a lot of um, pumping to, to try to bring your veins up, that can have the same effect. Um, so yeah, you want the tourniquet on for as little time as possible um, and, uh, you know, not, not as tight as it'll go, only as tight as is necessary. Um, to know that the you know that that's actually going to be an accurate representation of what your potassium actually is, and I would say, and I'll let you answer this for you, Emily. But in the percentage of kidney patients that I've seen in even in end stage, it, actually, there's not a lot of people that have elevated potassium. It's generally in stages four and five, um, mm. and if you, I would see it in maybe less than ten percent of my patients, and interestingly, in pets they increase potassium in end stage renal it's phosphorus that they take out and they add in potassium mm. to stop um, heart arrhythmias and um, cardiovascular issues which i find that the veterinary world have got this right it seems to be that the human world for whatever reason takes it out for no reason so i don't know what percentage you see it in emily in your, in your kidney patients what would you say yeah only um quite a low percentage actually like i can only think of a couple of patients who've actually had elevated potassium levels on bloods. And were they on dialysis per chance? Because sometimes it's the way they dialysize that also bumps up the potassium. Um, no, all the ones on dialysis, their levels have been okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because the, um, the fluid that they use, the, um, yeah with yep. the dialysis has different levels of potassium so that correct help. yeah so i just want to reiterate that because i feel like that's something that we bump up against in emails from renal dietitians that come in all the time is why we don't have more emphasis on removing potassium and i want to reiterate that unless you need to take it out you will accelerate the disease and you potentially increase your risk of heart arrhythmias and cardiovascular issues by not having potassium in there it's really essential it's only when the kidneys have gotten to the point that they can't filter that that you're seeing it on a correctly done blood test should you start to then remove potassium from your diet and I just I feel like Emily and I are the trailblazers to get this right in the renal community because it's become one of these weird blanket things a bit like the fish oil thing of a guy that just mm. was eating a bit of fish and probably had a weird disorder and it gets blanketed and it's crazy how these rumors start and then just spread right across a faculty and so Again, if you go back and look at the video that Emily and I did on potassium a while ago, we've got the scientific studies there. We're not making this stuff up. Um, we've had no issues with keeping potassium foods in people with kidney disease um, when their potassium has been quite level on um, mm -hmm. tests. And we've worked with, you know, in the kidney disease community, I think we've had, you know, close to, I don't know, 60, 70,000 people have gone through the program now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're not making stuff up. So... Mm -hmm. 
on the weird occasion that you have had a blood test and you've had the tourniquet done properly and you didn't pump your fist and oh dear, your potassium levels are high and you've maybe in stage four, stage five. Emily, tell me, what is potassium leaching? How can they do it? And what percentages are we likely to see in a reduction of potassium if they if they do this method to try and get their potassium yeah. levels down? Yeah, so potassium leaching, um, so I'll run through how you do it. So we do it um, obviously... Uh, generally with vegetables and generally vegetables that we're going to be cooking. Um, so first thing to do, peel the vegetable. Um, this is also important because in some vegetables, a lot of the potassium content can be found in the skin. Um, so even just removing that can help a little bit. Cut it up into, um, you know, fairly small pieces and put it in a large pot of water. Um, rinse, you know, rinse the vegetables and get rid of that water. And then you want to fill the water and leave the vegetables in there to soak for at least four hours. Um, so you want a minimum of four hours um, at room temperature or altern alternatively, if you're really organised, you can let them soak overnight in the fridge um, and just leave it to soak. So after either the four hours um, or overnight, then you want to rinse that water. So remember that the water that's sitting in the pot is going to be really high in potassium. So we don't want to use that for our cooking um, because that's defeating the purpose. We want to get rid of that water, um, put it out on the veggies, and then you rinse the veggies again and then cook with them. And so that process of letting the vegetables soak and then rinsing, but also cooking as well. So cooking in itself will lower potassium, uh, will lower the amount of potassium that you're then eating from the vegetables. And in terms of how much it's able to lower, that sort of, it varies um, a little bit between vegetables for one thing, um, but looking anywhere between sort of 20, they say about, you know, studies show about 20 to 40 to 50% reduction in potassium. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, I was looking at a study that showed that frozen vegetables. So if you've purchased the vegetables frozen, if you then do this process, you can actually reduce potassium by, um, you know, even up to 90%. Um, so yeah, that is a way that you're able to keep in some of the foods that you may otherwise have been avoiding um, and also to still get some of the benefits from those foods which are really good for you um, but are high in potassium that you might otherwise have reduced in your diet. Right. And so another thing I want to add in that I always like if I, I don't need to potassium leach, but if I'm doing something like, something like that, you could add a little bit of apple cider vinegar if it's store-bought vegetables. That will help pull any pesticides and chemicals out. At the same time, might as well kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Out of interest, Emily, do you know, and I actually don't know this, potassium leaching, does it pull any other minerals out? Is it pulling other stuff? I'm assuming it must. It's not just potassium, right? Well, the studies that I've had a look at, it, it doesn't seem to be um, having a massive effect on um, many of the other minerals. So I don't think it's like, yes, it's definitely going to, I would say, reduce them, but I don't think to the point of, you know, sort of making a vegetable almost um, not having any benefit. So um, yeah, it, not to that extent. So it'll still have its alkaline qualities. And yeah, still, still, yeah, still has fibre. Right. Um, yeah, still, you know, maintain. I'm sure it'll probably you know, I would assume that it would drop a little bit in things like magnesium content, but it does seem to really be potassium that um, is reduced by the, the greatest amount with this. Okay. Um, and are there any cooking methods or anything else that helps to bring down potassium? Or is it just straight the soaking method? The soaking and then generally um, it seems to be that if you boil foods, that tends to um, end up with the lowest potassium content as opposed to, say, um, stir frying something okay. um, or even steaming. So boiling um, does tend to um, have the greatest effect. I guess the other thing to remember is you can over boil food to the point that they aren't, they don't, you know. I used to do when it was all yes. soggy. 
You're like, is that a piece of broccoli? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it can, you know, lose its minerals and some of its beneficial properties. So, yeah. So if it's bloggy and mushy and you don't recognise it, you've overcooked I it. I think it's too much. Too much. <laughs> okay, so anything else you want to say about potassium and potassium leaching? I know this is a quicker video, so it feels very weird. And I feel yeah, like I know, I it's weird, isn't it? Stuff, but I'm like, this is all we were going to do, a quick general one for people. So. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, no, I think that's about it. Or I will quickly say as well for people who have elevated um, phosphate, yes. that um, boiling can actually reduce the phosphorus content of vegetables um, and even legumes uh, and meat as well. So can also be used uh, to help with elevated phosphate. And that's great for anyone who's watching this with pets. Um, you can always um, boil then your pet's foods because like I mentioned in kidney disease with pets, it's not, um, they actually add in potassium, but phosphorus is something they're really mindful of. And I've written a blog about what foods are high in um, phosphorus and what aren't. But if you want to make sure that your dog's getting enough, um, of course, cat, well, your cat doesn't have it, it's just your dog. Cats are carnivores, people, not vegetarians. Um, if you're um, cooking and adding mm -hmm. alkaline vegetables for your dogs, yeah, some people make their cats vegetarian, but don't even start me on that one because they can't. Anyway, whole different. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, there's a whole cat vegan. But they, they can like vegetables, like they will eat vegetables. They're not meant to. Cats are purely yeah. meant to be carnivores. And there's a Joe Rogan talks about on his podcast about all these cats that are vegan. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's, I feel like it's a bit pushing our agenda onto a species that isn't like that this time. I digress. Uh, yeah, I digress. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a dog that you're doing that for, you can boil their food and then that will help get that down. But you want to make sure they get enough potassium. So I'm sure your vet will have add potassium in there to prevent any cardiovascular issues. That's all I have to say about potassium. Mm. And I highly recommend you go back and watch a longer video that Emily and I did in quite a bit of detail where we really get on our soapbox about this mm -hmm. potassium issue that we see in renal dietitians and things like that. And don't feel like we're having a go at renal dietitians. We just, we get very upset when there's big blanket statements made when there's research that's very uh, contrary to that. And especially when the research is saying that you'll accelerate the decline of kidney disease, mm -hmm. which we're all trying to prevent if you take out potassium when it's not needed. Um, so if you're unsure about this, please make sure you check with your doctor. Please make sure the nurse doesn't do the tourniquet too tight. Please make sure you're not fist pumping, holding a ball, anything like that. And if you're really unsure, if you get borderline potassium levels, I recommend you have two to three blood tests done with a week apart um, to give you a really good idea if you actually do high, have high potassium levels. Um, and if you want to know whether potassium can come down and normalize, then have a look. Uh, Emily and I did a video last week um, or the week before, somewhere in there, on a case study. Um, that Emily had and she had elevated potassium but um, that came with very early stages of kidney disease and I think in that stage it wasn't due potentially to the kidneys it sounded like she was dumping and doing some other weird stuff with calcium and her electrolytes and that normalized almost instantly when Emily started working with her so yeah so just make sure you check on bloods before you start taking out potassium because if it's not needed please don't do it I think that's it that's all Awesome. Well, that was short and sweet, Emily. I feel very bizarre. I feel like I haven't done enough, but that's that's okay. Sometimes people just want a quick five-minute video and we always do these great big long ones. So hopefully no. you've enjoyed this one and been a bit shorter. If there's any topics that you want to particularly know about, please leave a comment below. I do read those and check those every day. And make sure you hit subscribe and give us a like. If you want to know more about the Kidney Disease Solution, head over to our website, www.kidneycoach.com. Uh, if you have any questions and you're on the program, you can send an email to support at kidneycoach.com. If you want to know about our supplements, send an email to support at kygenesis, K-Y-G-E-N-I-S.com. Emily will answer that for you. Otherwise, please make sure you join our Facebook community. It's Facebook forward slash Kidney Coach. We've got such a beautiful community on there. Emily is um, writing posts for that every day. They're really informative. Um, our community just loves that there. There's a great group of amazing people on there um, really into looking at alternative ways to support their health and I guess our biggest message here is to be your own advocate and get educated which is why we do what we do so we appreciate you watching we appreciate you being part of our community and um, until next time we'll see you then again Emily thank you for your time bye